deep in our hearts. It's something that we remember to, to do on a, on a continual basis. But yeah, so you cannot, you cannot not communicate. You're always communicating at, you know, regardless, you're always communicating. So re, it's, th that's why you guys, that's why it is so important that you are aware of it. It's so important. I think women use that silence as a weapon. <laughs> Um, yeah, we may think we're using silence as a weapon, but I think there's also a large, a large population of women who think men use silence as a, as a weapon. Um, so, you know, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Um, and I know, I guess I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it's dependent on the gender. I think, uh, it's just, if you are somebody that doesn't communicate well, that's your area that you need to develop. That's the area that you need to, um, you know, work on, regardless of what sex you are. Um, and then, so the last thing is sometimes less is more. So we were just talking about non-communication and, you know, Ambassador Moore just said that sometimes women use non-communication as a weapon, which I think people can do, people do do both ways. People intentionally um, are silent at, and using that as a weapon and it goes both ways. But um, sometimes less is more. Sometimes it's okay. It's better not to say anything. Because again, going back to the second thing, communication is irreversible. So when you say things and you know you shouldn't have said them, there's nothing you can do about that. But there are times when you should, where you just should be very, you shouldn't speak. So if you're someone that you, that struggles with guarding your mouth, guarding your tongue, um, and yeah, you say the wrong thing and you say the wrong thing. You can't take it back. But if you're someone that struggles with, with maybe your choice of words, you don't always use the choice, the best choice of words. Um, or, you know, you curse a lot or something that you you got that cursing demon, <laughs> you know, then you might need to need to practice, um, uh, being more quiet, not talking as much. Um, you know, if, for example, we'll take it to the workplace. If if you are someone that struggles with profanity, um, and obviously the work environment typically isn't the place to shoot off like that. But uh, so in the work environment, you definitely want to make sure that you are aware of what you're saying and that you're that you're quiet. <laughs> you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Isn't that what they say? Um, yeah, so, but if you're silent on something, you should, oh, I missed it. I, I read it, but I missed it, and I should have just read it out loud. Um, yeah, that's a good point. So don't be silent to avoid an issue. If you are silent because you're upset, that, that's not a good reason to be silent. If you're silent because um, you're listening, then of course, that's a wonderful time to be silent. Um, but it's not good to sit on issues. It's really not. And you guys, you probably think in my marriage that I'm the one that talks a lot and I'm the one that's like, oh, you know, all, you know, all up in my husband's face, but I'm not. We're, we're, and he's not either. He's not aggressive or he's not, you know, loud and boisterous or anything like that. We, we're, we're a really good mix. There's times when he's more outspoken about things and times, <laughs> and times that I'm more outspoken about things. But, um, but, most of the time I am more, I'm more quiet. Surprise. <laughs> I'm more quiet. Um, and it's because I like to process, you know, I like to process what, what's, what's going on around me. Again, body language, word choice. I like to process all of that. And, um, I, and back in the days, um, yes, yeah, silent just to register what's going on, but that took some time. Yeah. So it's, it, yeah. So yeah, it's good to be silent if you're trying to process things. Right. Um, what I was going to say is back in the days, I used to take offense to things kind of easily, you know, and, um, there was something that happened at work one day where I realized that I am internalizing things that I shouldn't be. I am taking blame for things that I shouldn't be. I'm, you know, I'm drawing conclusions that I'm the butt of somebody's joke for no reason, you know? So, um, you take me as someone who cries easily also, which is a good thing. I don't cry easily. I don't think I cry easily. I don't know. Maybe I do. I didn't used to, though. I, I think it's after having kids I became more prone to crying. But anyway, I really don't cry easily, you guys. <laughs> I don't. Um, 
So anyway, but so back in the day, I used to take offense easily to things that I shouldn't have things that really had nothing to do with me outside issues. I would take the blame for them and I would be, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I cry of frustration too. Oh my gosh. I'm the same way. Um, that's, I think that's usually when I cry when I'm frustrated. It's like, Oh, you just, that's my release. But anyway, um, so I used to be very, I would take everything to heart and I'd be very, I guess you can call it sensitive, right? Something happened at work where my whole mindset changed and um, I had this opinion of someone in my head where I thought that she was out, kind of out to get me and she would always give me work to do and tell me I was doing something wrong and this and that. And I would take, <laughs> I would take it to heart and I would think that, oh, she just doesn't like me. She just has it out for me, right? Until one day, um, she sent me a gift, like just kind of random out of nowhere and said, like with this beautiful card about how she appreciates me and she's so excited about my growth and how I've been, you know, doing so well since she's known me. We had a relationship that lasted probably about seven years in, in that um, work environment. And um, at that point, I realized all this time that I had been, you know, assuming that her giving me more work and all the emails that she would send me, et cetera, all the time that I was assuming that that was like, and it, because she didn't like me, was I realized that I was I was making these assumptions out of nowhere I was drawing my own conclusions for no reason so from that point on I started to look at things a little bit differently when when I'm in a having a conversation with my husband and you know um, maybe we're having a disagreement about something I'm silent because I'm listening to what he's saying I'm processing what he's saying and if my initial response is to feel offended about it I you guys literally I and sitting listening to him, if I feel like I'm offended, I'll, I'll, I'll literally like kind of stop and think like, okay, did he really mean to, did he, what, did, what does he really mean? Where, what is the pain point that he's expressing here? You know, and I do that so that when I respond, I'm responding from a place of how can we fix this? You know, how can, how can I change what I'm doing or, um, how can we together do things differently to make this work? So, um, so those are times when, when I'm more silent, um, in, in our communication, I don't like to jump to the, jump to conclusions. I don't like to jump the gun and say things that I wish I could not said. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty mindful of that. And that's something that I've grown. Um, people see the beautiful and don't understand how it could be. So they pick it at it like a kid. Yeah. And Rob, I think some of that too is just a lot of our own insecurities. We don't realize that, um, you know, we don't have to be so insecure or we don't have to be so sensitive about things or assume the worst in every situation. Um, that truly there are people out there that just want to help. Truly there are people out there that just want to see us grow and do better. Um, <laughs> yeah, and sometimes we do just get offended too easily. And I think it's because we think a lot of things are about us. If we just leave ourselves alone, not everything is about us, you guys. How many how many of you guys tend to think that things are about you? <laughs> when somebody's mad at you, it's because, you know, it not, has nothing to do with you. You know, they're having a bad day. They are going through something right now, and you are just the person in front of them to say what they need to say and keep moving. You know? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, I was going to give you an example, but I'll leave that alone. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I think there are times when it's better to be silent. Um, less is more. Um, and you just have to learn when to be quiet. In your relationships with your, with your spouse, as you grow together, you're learning about each other. That should be your mission in marriage is to learn about your spouse. Learn what triggers his emotions, what triggers... Um, will cause him to listen better, um, you know, all of those things. And it takes time. You're not going to know that off the bat. You need to, to, to learn him, study him, you guys, women, <laughs> men, study your wives, study them so that you can understand what it, what their triggers are when it comes to communications. Now there are triggers for all kinds, all other sorts of things in marriage too, but specifically with regard to communication, husbands, wives, we need to study our spouses. 
we need to study our spouses so so that we know them in and out. There's still going to be things that they do that you wonder like, what? Why'd you do that? But the more that you can get to learn their behaviors, their um, you know their habits, the things that they do all the time, the better off you'll be when it comes to situations you know where you where you're having a, dis a disagreement, situations where communication has you know is imperative. Um, dwell with them in understanding. That's the word. Yes. Yes, yes, you have to, you have to. This is the person that God brought to you that you're supposed to be with for life. If you don't understand them or if you don't even try or want to understand them, then that you need to figure some things out with yourself. You know, um, you might have married them for the wrong reason. <laughs> you know, if you don't care to learn about your spouse inside and out, what he enjoys, what he loves, you know, what he dislikes, um, then you need to think about why you got married. Um, of course, you know, this all comes, it's a process, you guys, it's, it's, it's such a process. Um, and Ambassador Moore said, maybe you don't love them. <sighs> I don't know, guys. I don't know. It's something, it's not an answer that I have. That's, that's something between you and, and the Lord. You know, you need to figure that out. Um, it's not even something that you can really ask your husband, <laughs> you know, um, I think sometimes we say, do you, do you know that I love you? Or, you know, <laughs> those kind of, we, we shoot out those kind of statements to our spouse and it's like, uh, how do you expect them to respond? Of course, they'll probably say, yeah, I know you love me, but why are you, the bigger question is why do you feel like you need to ask your spouse if they feel like you love them? You know, if you truly love your spouse, you will be doing the things that show him or her that you love them without even thinking, you know, without even thinking. You'll be doing things and saying things that just come kind of natural. Yes, some of it comes with, a lot of it comes with learning about your spouse, but a lot of it too just becomes instinctual. You know, you just, you just are so into your, into your dude that it's just like, oh, I'm going to do this, this and that. And it just comes natural. If I got married, it's about loving yourself less than you do to your spouse. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I don't want to go on too, too more, too much longer. Cause this is, I mean, this can, we can go on forever you guys about this, but yeah, ambassador more, that's absolutely correct. And we have to learn to understand that you can't live two separate lives in one marriage. You know, it, it takes communication, you guys, prayer and consistency. Communication, prayer, and consistency, you guys. That's what that's what it takes. So, um, so thanks, thanks for joining me again today, guys. Or thanks for joining me and Ambassador Moore today. <laughs> I feel like we're always like you know hitting hitting off each other. But um, thanks, you guys. It's it's um, it's just really important that we we understand that these are the keys to communication in marriage. You have the fact that communication operates on two levels: nonverbal and verbal. Um, we said that it's communication is irreversible. Um, we said that um, communication is an ongoing process. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good, Ambassador Moore. Um, and then we also said that you cannot not communicate and that sometimes less is more. Right? So keep those things to heart, you guys, when you're next time you are in a setting where you're with your husband or your spouse and you're chopping it up, you know, keep those things in mind as you're going through your communications with your spouse, okay? I'll be here tomorrow, same time, same place, and uh, I'll talk to you then. All right, take care, everybody. Bye.